Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's version of the Business Spotlight. I'm your host, Todd Rodden. I'm a certified business and executive coach I'm based here in the Dayton, Ohio area. And we're thrilled today to have Dan Portick join us. Dan is the president of a couple different businesses, uh, BVS Film Productions, as well as Premier Podcast Productions. He also is a best-selling author, which he's going to share more about that, uh, actually the author of several different books as well. So again, if you're uh, new to the Business Spotlight, we're thrilled to have you join us. Uh, we encourage you to check, check out other episodes after you watch uh, th this episode here and go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you'll receive uh, future messages as well from other inspiring leaders like you're going to hear from Dan today as well. So Dan Portick. Welcome to the Business Spotlight. Uh, we're thrilled to have you. Oh, Take a minute thanks and for having yourself me. and tell us a little more about uh, your various businesses. Sure. I greatly appreciate, appreciate being on here. Um, yeah, no, uh, I've got uh, a couple of businesses we're running now. We've got uh, BBS Film Productions, Premier Podcast Productions are two of the main ones. Um, you know, we do uh, video production, uh, video content marketing for companies. We also do uh, podcast production as of two years ago um, and really taking podcasts from the audio to video world. So that's that's basically the two two main companies I have right now. Yeah. So what do you love about them? Well, what I love about them is, uh, I you know, being the owner of the company, I'm able to, you know, kind of it, it's free the good and the bad i guess about owning your own company you know you can show up when you want to but you know you are your own boss so there's there's two sides to that so I, what i really love about it is the freedom to to uh have my make my own destiny more than anything so you talked about you know film production and also podcasts uh as well so maybe talk through you know who are your target customers? Uh, you know, and somebody who's listening might know, Hey, I, sure. I could be a great fit. Their services could really help me out. Yeah. So, um, I, I think our, we have a wide variety of customers. Um, you know, I've been doing the video production for about 10 years prior to that, I had a bigger agency. So, you know, we've got a lot of experience with working with large entities. And for some reason we get these enterprise size companies that come to this boutique shop of ours. Uh, and I think part of it's because we get them, we understand politics, we understand deadlines, we understand budgets. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like once you get in with a big company like that, you're getting into the, it's kind of like the promised land, you know, it's, it's not a matter of having to, once you jump through the certain amount of hoops to know that you're the vendor and you're in, you're in, you know, so that's, that's something good about the big companies. And then we have a, a plethora of smaller groups that we work with as well, all the way down to, you know, individuals. Uh, we do have some coaches that we, we do podcasts for. Um, so, you know, uh, it, it, it's a wide range, but uh, uh, you know, we, we, try to keep it to people that can pay their bills and, you know, and, and respect and understand what we do, I guess. <laughs> so you talked about with some of those larger companies, you know, uh, having to jump through the hoops, right? So mm -hmm. what have you found to be keys to getting engagement with those bigger companies? Yeah. The keys to getting engagement. Um, uh, well, it, it starts with, you know, things as simple as being on time. You know, you're, you know, when you talk to someone, if they say, you know, reach out to me next week by email at 1145 in the afternoon, in the morning, um, if you don't call them, especially with big companies, if you don't reach out to them at 1145 in an email, that's your first hoop. And usually you might get two strikes if you're lucky, if they like your profile picture. <laughs> <laughs> if, if they don't, you know, that was your first and last hoop with the big company. They don't have time or they just can't afford to deal with people that are unprofessional. So that's considered a hoop. And the next one might be, you know, how about we set up a meeting and talk about a project, come back with a proposal on this date. If you do it on time, you will, they will consider you if you and you must ask the proper questions, you know, you know, budget, time frame, things like that. All that comes with experience and dealing with the uh, big companies. So um, another thing I find is, um, you know, having when you reach out to a big company, you know, if it's a cold contact, a lot of them work through social media. You know, LinkedIn is the 
big elephant in the room, basically. You know, you want to use that properly. Make sure your profile looks good. Everything has to look professional before you, you know, reach out to somebody. And you have to give them something that they are interested in. Not what you want to give them, but what they are interested in. So those are just some really basic hoops to get to that first level to talk to, let's say, a vice president of Eaton or whatever corporation you're you're talking to. I'm pulling on that string even a little more. Uh, so to give them <laughs> something of interest. So what comes to mind for you there? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll go in a little deeper in another direction. So um, I had the opportunity to work with Tom Hopkins. And um, in, in addition to the book I wrote with him, I was able to do his life story documentary. So one of the things in the documentary was we were reaching out to luminaries that were successful in the business world at a level that most people couldn't reach these people to get them into the documentary. <clears throat> so what I had for them was I'm doing Tom Hopkins documentary. Would you like to be in it? So there's your, you know, your niche, you know, that's, that's the <laughs> thing. That's the thing that, that hooked them in many cases. And you could do that with, with almost anything with, with any level of customer, you know, if you're do, if you're doing cold outreach in a social media environment in LinkedIn to a big corporation, you're going to have to do the numbers. That's bottom line. I mean, that's that's because not everybody's going to have an interest. Uh, I'll give you another example really quick. Um, you know, uh, we did a really short video. It was like 15 seconds. Um, <clears throat> you know, do, hey, are you having a problem with your corporation um, developing videos? We work on a you know, uh, we give you most uh, value for your money. And it was done, 15 seconds, you know. I sent it to all the large corporations in Cleveland. I wanted to call back. He was, it was a very large corporation. And um, he says, I, I have a need for that. <laughs> and within two weeks, I had a $20,000 order from it. I never even met the guy, which was really strange. It was all done through emails and through LinkedIn. Uh, I did meet him eventually when we picked up a deposit check, but, you know, and got the project going. But um, so it's numbers, you know, you know, you reach out to the vice president, reach out to the president, reach out to the marketing manager, reach out to everybody within a company. If you're going after these big corporations, one of them will get back to you. <laughs> so. So what do you think separates you from other uh, film production companies then? What makes mm -hmm. you unique? Yeah, so we don't think about just like the lighting and the cameras. We think about the company and um, and the relationship with not only us and them, but them and them, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So, you know, if we're dealing with a marketing manager, sometimes um, they have to deal with a creative director or a vice president. So... We know when we're doing a meeting with someone, you want to try to get all of them in one meeting because everyone has a different opinion. And the marketing, we've found this out many times over the years, you know, the marketing manager says, I want to do this. You know, we're ready to go. We put all these resources into doing something. It goes up one level on the ladder and they say, no, we don't like that direction. We're going another direction. Now it makes the marketing manager look bad at that point because that was his whole idea or he or she. Um, and then, you know, and we then you get into a budget issue, you know, well, we can't, you know, do we do this over? You know, you're, it's feature creep is what it's called in our industry. <laughs> so um, we've learned, you know, just one example is to try to get everybody in the same meeting. That that makes a big difference. So in terms of driving growth in your business, you gave some examples uh, of mm -hmm. some of the hooks and, and, and that. But what have been you know key marketing strategies for you to, to, to build relationships and then grow the business? And yeah, maybe, I think maybe talk to both businesses because I probably I imagine they're sure. very different. Yeah. Yeah. So in the video production end of things, um, I, I think well, both of them really um numbers is is the key. I mean, it I, I I take a rip a page right out of Tom Hopkins, how to master the art of selling. You know, it's you gotta talk to enough people to get <laughs> business. And uh in the documentary, he gives a great story about having to travel literally door to door for a hundred um, to, uh, people knocking on the doors to get, uh, um, to get, he was doing real estate and <laughs> like the 70th door, one person said, we were praying for someone to come in and try to sell our house because we got <laughs> transferred. So it's a great story. And that got him into the, into that world. So it's the same principle with, you know, the, the, 
any sales really you really have to do the numbers and not get discouraged because that's eventually somebody's going to work with you if you have the right message and it's done professionally you know that just that just hedges the bet towards you better mm -hmm. so that that would be one one main one uh the way i would look at it so you've been at uh the podcast business just a couple of years now but the pr film production mm -hmm. you've been you know leading the business for for some time so the, obviously right. any life of an entrepreneur several twists and turns in the road some hills yeah. and some valleys so what's What's been uh, the largest obstacle that you had to overcome uh, during your time that stands out? And what'd you learn? Yeah, you know, um, COVID was a big one. You know, I mean, we, we you know, uh, having enough resources to survive that, knowing where the resources are to keep your company alive and well during that time, um, and building um, relationships. You know, it was really funny because funny in a good way, I guess, um, you know, when COVID hit, some of the people in our organization are like, oh, that's it. This, you know, we're packing up with this business. I'm like, no, 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 no. Numbers never lie. Relationships never lie. And we got a call the same day, the first day that the, everything went on lockdown. And we had a, uh, our biggest customer said, hey, I need a video about COVID and how we're handling it with our customers. Bingo. Okay. That's what we're going into the COVID video business. <laughs> so being able to, um, you know, just pivot, I guess, you know, to whatever is done, you know, whatever's needed at that point. And the reason they came to us is because we were an inexpensive group that could do a video on COVID. They had to put the budget out no matter what the freeze was. So, you know, that was one thing. Um, and then, you know, yeah, you know, in this economy right now, you need to do three times the amount of work to get the same amount of business, you know, currently. But you have to have that mindset. You have to know that that's happening right now. And you have to be able to, you know, power through that and stay positive and you will succeed. You will survive. So um, that was one big one. Um, you know, and then it's just ups in the video business, it's ups and downs. You know, we had a, our first quarter was pretty difficult. Um, you know, it just everybody was like pulling in the reins, who's going to be the next president, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and then all of a sudden, boom, you know, I, I, through that time, though, I knew it was important to make sure you're doing the numbers and you do those numbers no matter what. And I'll be darned if it doesn't like just start booming now, it's it's like crazy busy now. So, you do something over here and you're continuing to do it. Something over here is going to drop. It's, it's been that way for me for 30 years. I have, it, it's like Novocaine. It's going to work every time. You just got to give it time. So that's my thoughts. Yeah. Never, never stop prospecting uh, and right. working the relationships. Right. Yeah. There's no, and there's, there's really no shortcuts either. I mean, you know, social media is great, great to keep your eye ahead. And, you know, you hear these stories about, you know, I made a billion dollars in one weekend. You know, every one of those people had to work their butts off before that happened. Uh, and a lot of times they just say that type of thing just to get you to buy their 1995 a month book or whatever it might be. <laughs> so, anyway, just a side note. <laughs> so, you get line of sight to working with a lot of different companies, right? Mm. So uh, kind of their different strategies. I'm curious, is there some, a, a common theme is like, hey, this is where they tend to miss the boat in terms of particular leveraging video uh, for, for their business? Yeah, yeah. I see, uh, well, you know, there's a couple of them. Like um, they, they seem to shut it off completely when, you know, they get a budget constraint. You know, and that's probably one of the worst things you could do uh, for a business is just kind of like stop your advertising when you're <laughs> when you're, you know, when you're having a tough time. Um, you know, you always have to stay in front of people or they're going to forget you. You know, um, I can't remember. Uh, Grant Cardone had a uh, it wasn't irrelevant. He said something uh, else. But, you know, you, you don't obscure. That was it. He says, uh, you don't want to be obscure as a business because that's a kiss of death and uh, nothing worse than obscurity for a business. Yeah. So Never be that's... that best kept secret. Man. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So now as you look, uh, you know, go forward here, 
What's the current mm -hmm. challenge or two that you and the team are, are trying to address? Well, um, I think some of the current challenges is uh, educating individuals on podcast production for businesses. <clears throat> I think um, everybody thinks of podcasts as like, um, you know, they're really, you know, more for individuals just to go have fun, have a cup of coffee and talk about stuff. And they look at the Joe Rogans out there that are, you know, billionaires because of it. And they all want to they all want to get a huge following, you know, and hope yeah. to make money from their following when there are so many other avenues that you can utilize podcasting to be successful. Um, you know, it, it just for what we're doing here, for example, I mean, we're doing a podcast right now, you know, when it's done, it's going to go to your audience. It's going to go to my audience and both of us are going to benefit from it because, both our audiences are going to see things. So that's where podcasts can grow exponentially. So that's that's one of the things I think are um, important as a goal is we're really trying to go after to tell businesses, you know, this is these are some things you can really use as a tool to grow your business. Um, it's a little bit of a long game, but, you know, it will stay and it will continue to grow no matter what, as long as you're consistent with it. So what do, you, what do you think are keys to getting that message out, right? Business leaders bombarded with messages yeah. all day. Well, being a podcast production company, it's, 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 it's nice. You know, for us, not only do we have our own podcast, we have two podcasts. Um, one's called, um, uh, oh, uh, Com Talk. Uh, that's the main one for business. And uh, I can't remember the, we haven't yet done the other one, but Com Talk's the main one right now. Um, but we bring business leaders on to our podcast and, you know, many of them become customers after they see what they look like, you know, on camera and talk about their, their business. Um, but, um, you know, also I think, you know, from a standpoint of being a podcast company, when our customers bring people on their podcast, they come into our studio and they go, oh, this is your studio. This is what you do. Now you have their customers looking at what you're doing as well. And so that's one main way we're growing this is, is, is through that. And in, in addition to the LinkedIn messages that go out, which you probably got one from me originally. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> did. It works both ways. <laughs> exactly. Right. We're all doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's what we envision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Take that next step. So, you know, look a couple of years, three, four years down the road. Where do you see the podcast business? And also where do you see your um, film production business? Yeah, so I think things are going to change quite a bit with AI. Um, I really didn't touch on that, but uh, within the next two to three, I would say within the next year, uh, many of the things that podcast, I mean, video production companies can do will be obsolete. And we see that. We see the writing on the wall with that. And we're already creating a, a division called BVS AI Labs. And um, it's it's really about integrating AI into video production and the marketing of it. So um, a lot of people are still scratching their heads and trying to figure out what chat GPT is and what it can do. And, uh, you know, I went into a company about two weeks ago and I, I, I just, they were asking some questions and they said, can you, can this thing really do that? And I, <laughs> I hit a button and I went, boom, there it was on the screen. It was a full, you know, it was exactly what they, it takes one of their people two weeks to make they, they made it in one five seconds and all jaws just dropped <laughs> so so those are some of the things that you know people don't understand that ai is out there and it's not going away and it is going to be taking over much of the business world so you really need to know it you really need to know it I mean, that's an opportunity, but it also can sound like a pretty significant threat because a lot of businesses say, oh, hey, I can just do this myself now. I have somebody who, right, who can well, use I'll tell chat you. GPT. Okay. I've been in this business long enough, all the way back to faxes. Okay. First fax came out. Ah, this thing is never going to catch on. You know, first computer came out. Ah, this is never going to work, you know. And then you get people that, you know, utilize it. I remember when we were first doing you know, uh, brochures, me and my partner at the time, we, uh, got a 286 computer with page maker on it. Okay. 286 is probably the one, one millionth of this, <laughs> you yeah. know, and, uh, it was enough to make one page and design a page. And we had a third partner at the time. I said, 
said to both of us looked at this and said, everything is going to change right here. And I see it. And it did within a year, everything we had in our facility was obsolete, you know? So I see this as one of those disruptors is AI. So you got to get on the bandwagon. If you, if you're a business right now, you, you must, because it's going to make some drastic changes quickly. And uh, you can either be the, you know, the forward thinker that's ahead, or you can just kind of slowly fade into the, the background. I've seen both with businesses. So, um, you know, yeah, that's, that's my thought. All right. Well, uh, you know, talent and resources are, are always key uh, to growing a business. So maybe take yes. a minute to talk through your team and, and how you, you know, kind of retain, especially your top talent and also, you know, some of the other experts that you tap into. Uh, as sure. Well. Sure. So we have uh, editors on staff. I have a gentleman that's about my age, a little younger. He's a great editor. Been he owns his own business, you know, for many years, and he ended up coming on board with us. And he also owns a um, uh, studio, recording studio. So that d- doubles as a podcast studio for us in one of our studios. Um, and it, just a lot of experience. Uh, the other person that works for us is my son. He's uh, a millennial that uh, is really on top of AI. And, you know, if we can't figure out anything in our facility, we hand it to him and he can do it. He's yet to let us down on any of this, which is, you know, there's an app or something out there that can make it happen. So that that's good. Um, and then there's another gentleman, uh, which is our executive producer, who really, uh he uh, he oversees everything. He's kind of semi-retired, but he he had a bigger. He was in the Mad Men era, I guess you call it. And uh, he, but he know he can do pretty much anything in the in that world. And then we also have a whole group of individuals. We're, we work in a bigger building with a bigger uh, video production company. So if we need to scale, they do things like the All Star Game and just really big, you know, multi crew things. Um, so. You know, we can scale from, you know, a little video shoot all the way up to whatever it might be. So that's kind of our team uh, in North Olmsted, Ohio, actually. So we have a lot of entrepreneurs uh, watching this, especially those newer in their journey. So what do you mm-hmm. think have been your keys to success? And hey, you wish you knew then that you you know now. <laughs> what I know now. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what I would say is make sure you have enough funds. Don't spend crazy, you know, once you start making money, but before that do the numbers, you got to have a thick skin. You must know sales if you're going to be a business owner and, and, you know, a great book is how to master the utter sales by Tom Hopkins. It, it is the sales Bible for many, many multimillionaires and some billionaires actually, that have used that book for to start, start from nothing and <laughs> build their empires uh, in the sales aspect of it. It's it's a tremendous book, but find manners, obviously. Um, and, you know, but you got to know sales and you have to love people and you have to love to help people. Um, there's another great book out there. It's called the Go Giver series. Um, and Bob Berg is the uh, best selling author for that. It's new way to sell. Uh, it's a great book. So, um, you know, fill your mind on your way to work, read a book, you know, yep. listen to a book, you know, um, do, you know, the average, uh, I think it was, uh, average millionaire beyond, uh, you know, business executive reads 60 books a year, you know, or listens to 60 books. So try to make it a habit of doing, you know, a handful of books a week, you know, by listening to them. That's at least mine anyway. That's the way I do it. So there's some thoughts, right. but save your money. Save, save your money. <laughs> you need to have you need capital. You don't don't save it, but have capital. Have ten times what you think you need available at any given time. That's what I would tell my younger self. You know, don't buy the Porsche when right away. <laughs> right, yeah. don't buy it right away when you can't afford it. <laughs> that well, thing. <laughs> well, that that gives you the optionality that hey, when that opportunity comes, now you've yeah. got money to invest, right, to make that pivot or to make that acquisition. Right, right. 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 Or hard times come. You know, you can you can make it through with your business. You can pay your people instead of having to go in debt. You know, um, and debt's not a bad thing. It's just you know you just have to use it wisely. You know. So. uh 
Dan, what are, as we look to wrap up here today, what are the best way for folks to connect with you and to also follow BVS and Premier Podcast? Sure. Yeah. The, the easiest one where everything's on is uh, danportic.com, D-A-N-P-O-R-T-I-K.com. It has my businesses on there. It's got, you know, the books I've written and, you know, I have training videos on there as well. So that's the the easiest way. Um, also, you know, uh, for this podcast, I'm happy to uh, offer a free version of one of my books, uh, which is uh, called The Secret Online Door. And um, it's the way I was able to reach out to many of these luminaries and, and get through. Uh, it's all about negotiating anything from a job to, uh, you know, a problem you might have with lawn care service or, you know, or you know, uh, just reaching out to people in general, um, you know, how to get past that gatekeeper, how to get to the next level online, not talking, not through voice, strictly online. And, and so the best way for them to reach out to that, is that through your website, danfordick.com? Yeah, they can do that. I'll have a special link I'll send to you that uh, they'll be able to download it, you know, uh, just mention that they listen to it on this um, podcast. All right, and we'll we'll definitely include that in the show notes uh, here to go mm -hmm. along with with, uh, with this interview. So Dan, as we wrap up here today, uh, a lot of great lessons learned that you shared, part of your journey, great insights here. But what inspires you as we leave here today? From the beginning, or no, now, as you, as you look forward, right? <laughs> as I look forward, yeah. Um, what ex what I guess. What inspires me is, well, you know, my son being in the business, I want to have him, see, I, it, it, my family, my family and my son that's in the business, I want him to see what's out there and what's available and how to get to where he wants to be in, in the business world. Um, but also helping people. And um, I love the thrill of the chase after clients and then also the acquisition of clients that's one of my favorite things is after a project closes um to see the paperwork come through with a an approval on it that's the way we say it um and starting that project it's just a thrill to to have that you know not even necessarily the deposit check it's just getting that getting a customer involved in what we do and knowing we're going to be able to help them with something yeah, the joy of getting that signature, right? Yeah, it's a great <laughs> feeling. You work so hard for it. You work yeah. so hard for it. And it's a wonderful reward just to see it come through because you know you've done the right things in the sales world. Well, Dan Portick, thank you for sharing your story. Uh, I know lots Thanks of for uh, me. lessons for our viewers here today. And again, for our viewers, uh, we're thrilled to have you join us. Uh, we encourage oh, you to hit that, that like button. Uh, we always appreciate that. But also, seriously, if you haven't already, uh, hit subscribe so you receive uh, future messages from inspiring leaders here as well. And again, check out the show notes for this so you can see the the link uh, to uh, get access to the complimentary book that Dan offered as well. So with that, appreciate you joining us all and have a terrific day.